Zeon 1001 here and in this video I'm going to be going over some um, sculpting reviews that I've been doing for my mentee. Now over on my Patreon I have a uh, highest tier of the uh, mentorship which basically means that um, you know I'll hang out with you and help you um, you know go super saiyan on your uh, blender capabilities or at least to the best of my ability so this person has got the package and was so graciously uh, nice enough to allow me to use his sculpts as an example on a uh, you know just basically talking about sculpting in general now this particular sculpt isn't mine like I said it's done by one of my mentees however you'll be seeing me touch up on I believe four sculpts in this um, video so it's going to be kind of a long one um, so you know at the beginning I start off you know just kind of drawn with the grease pencil just talking about you know stuff I hated about it um, you know uh, just BSing um, you know I also went through my um, Pinterest board next level where I'm always posting the things that inspire my dreams of who I wish I could be as far as art or you know not even that, you know, basically it's the future because someday I'll be at that level. It's my next level. So, you know, starting out with this sculpt, um, the biggest thing uh, I was saying, you know, was mainly that, you know, was it like a robotic simian? He said no. Then in that case, he uh, made a mistake because it was kind of a robotic simian. Um, so this is me basically touching it up. Now, as far as the dynamic topology tools, I want you to keep a close eye on the dyno uh, the dyne topo uh, area of the uh, end panel. Now you see I'm using subdivide collapse and relative detail which are my um, you know typical settings however it's important to be aware of the difference in the behaviors in fact I was, right here I, I was drawing I was like this guy get hit in the head with a cannonball um, but back to what I was saying so you know my detail size usually operate around uh, 10 and 5, 5 for fine, 10 for normal. Subdivide collapse means that um, if the density is greater, it'll collapse it versus adding subdivisions, which is just a nice way to, you know, block things in, in my opinion. Uh, I could be completely wrong, you know, um, you know, if you need to, if you need more information, definitely read the Blender Wiki about it because, you know, they have a wiki about it. Uh, relative detail just means that um, it's going to be relative versus uh, constant. Constant, I believe, um, does it no matter how much I zoom in, relative uh, is reactive to my zoom level or something. Um, but really, you know, these buttons almost don't even understand me anymore. I just know <laughs> their behaviors. So that's kind of, you know, the important thing to go over here is, uh, you know, behaviors when it comes to uh, sculpting. Now, the block in's important. Um, you know, I think I went over that in my older videos and, and silhouette. Um, both of these things are, you know, pretty much all I look at whenever uh, I receive a model from someone. You know, first thing I look at is the shapes and, you know, the shading and, you know, how it's presented in the viewport. So, you know, um, usually the, and also blend size. Um, you know, people send me files all the time. They're like 30 megabytes. Don't do that. Come on. If you can't get it under 10 megs, you got problems. And if you're a beginner, you should not be having blend files over 20 megs. But really, just decimate it via modifier. That's that's all there is to it. Just put a decimate on and set the point to, you know. I know that's something I've went over uh, many times in other videos. But that's just a, um, you know, just to be courteous. You know, if your blend file is like 80 megs, I'll probably complain about it. You know, if it's over 50 megs, I'll definitely be like, hey, uh, you know how to make these things smaller because you know files that heavy tend to take quite a toll on the computer I mean I understand you packing textures and all that stuff but you know these people aren't packing textures they're sending me models and these models are humongous so the the pinch and the crease are my, t my two friends however the crease on this default settings has a uh, you know a, a bit of a, a wide curve to it which makes it hard to control um, you know the main brushes in my workflow that I think are the only brushes that I create even is the super pinch which is just a duplicated pinch brush that's 
turned all the way up and the dam which is basically uh, either the standard brush or the crease brush with the uh, you know the curve set to a uh, you know a downward left slope so that's something that you definitely want to experiment with however you know I don't use any special brushes you know people ask me all the time they're like why don't you use ZBrush I'm like well you know it's, it's basically easier in Blender and also on top of that um, you know, in ZBrush, I'm using the same brushes anyways, and then the additional step is added of me having to export it out. So, uh, me being the uh, click reducer that I am, I'm always trying to uh, reduce those clicks. So, you know, if your sculpting is looking like the, um, you know, the sculpts that you see at the beginning of each of these little segments, then this video is for you. If you're some master sculptor, then, you know, get the hell out of here, you know, give me some advice. But, you know, this is, this is for the, you know, the, the, the robot disciples you know the people that have been following me since I did the uh, how to concept the robot in blender tutorial because you know ever since then I've been on a um, you know a bit of an explorative adventure uh, to try to find out you know how to get to that next level in hard surface technology and you know the best advice I give you is probably being connected to people that represent what you want to be and then finding out their secrets and then using it against their families you know probably not the latter but you know like um if you need information you find a person that knows more than you um but you know back to the main thing you know it's all of this has been exploration so when people write me and they're like hey i followed your your how to concept a robot video i'm like face palming you know because it's such an old video and also um you know the design sense and all that stuff was just tacky in retrospect but it was my level at the time, but now I've seen more of the light, you know, my sharing gun has gotten a little bit better, you know, someday it'll make me go blind from being on the computer so much, but, you know, that aside, and so here you see me, you know, going through with the dam, you see that now it's set to brush detail, now brush detail basically makes it where that little circle that represents your brush is the entire subdivision area, so when you set it low, everything under that gets subdivided to that level, which I find to be amazing. Um, this is something that is, you know, ZBrush doesn't have this type of behavior. Um, you know, they have their own. You know, there's the only time I use hard ops just to quiet the, the GUI. And, you know, back to relative detail to begin blocking it out. So, you know, the goal here isn't to make, like, finished robots um, bust. It's just to, um, you know, just kind of peck on these things and uh, just show potential of my mentee's uh, next level or what I feel would be next I'll watch me go back to brush detail and I'm back to business cutting in fine so you know also uh, I'm uh, starting to try to sculpt rubber and cloth on, on the models like um, you know my next level is always around the corner I'll never turn around and be like I got it because there was once a time when I said that and looking back at that robot which I'll have never seen because it was like, you know, back in 2012 or something, it was atrocious. Um, you know, so the best way to, you know, improve at sculpting is to probably just practice, practice, practice. You know, there's no magic video that's going to help you. Maybe maybe this video will give you a, a little tidbit of information or inspire you on shapes. However, you know, my shapes are pretty much um, a big mosh pit of all the people that I know all the people I know, I mean, basically, if I'm comment, if I comment on your post and I'm like, "Hey, I like your style," that means, yeah, yeah, that, that's I'm eating that for breakfast. Like that is something that I'm trying to put in my brain, you know. Uh, unless you're making something in my style, then you know, I like your style, meaning that I like your style, not I want to be like you because um, you're trying to be like me. Point aside. So, you know, I started off making big shapes hitting it with the polish really hard and then coming through and and I'm still under brush detail by the way so I'm able to just polish this stuff and basically uh, put my own bevel in here you know this is like at this point this kind of detail overkill because as you know I'm the the retapo dragon you know I retapo all the time so well nowadays you see me retapo a little bit less and also being a little bit more sloppy with my geometry but that's because you know I'm seeking a final result that at the end, if you're asking me what does my wireframe look like, get out of here. 
you know, because it doesn't matter anymore. I mean, it does matter, but, you know, if this isn't for a commercial job or I'm putting in a game engine or selling it to somebody, yeah, I don't care. So, I um, also want to take a, a, a short moment to talk about Hard Ops. Hard Ops has, has received an update over the last three days thanks to RF, um, IS, BF, and um, I can't remember the rest, but there's a lot of people behind the scenes of Hard Ops helping um, me get the script right. You know, at this point, I was looking at his block in. So here's the mesh that I sculpted over his original. So of course it's a you know dramatic improvement. However, you know the the process of doing this has kind of helped me in a way understand kind of how um, other people make their choices. So you'll see the next mesh come up, and the next mesh will look so much cooler. Like um, I'm actually quite proud of um, the person who submitted these meshes because they all showed a large degree of improvement. So even before I end. I took a moment to just kind of uh, show off the entire technique again in short. Like, this is just a recap that I did. So I was glad that I actually recorded this because it, it was quite cool um, to do in real time. You know, sometimes you, you pick up the pen and you, you, you don't got it, dude. But, you know, I'm trying to... It's a, I try to build myself to be what you know what I t tell you guys you know, a blender tainer I want to be on 24-7 you know I need to pick, pick up the pen and slash like Zorro Z's basically so continuing on so here you see me using the snake hook and you know, I, was, I was making a rant about how people always do that to their meshes when they demonstrate the snake hook it drives me crazy it's like it's such an ugly shape, but you know, uh, that's just me. So now I'm going back to uh, regular, but you know, the snake hook, if you're using dynamic topology with subdivide collapse, whenever you grab it, you can just basically use it to decimate the mesh and just basically reconfigure and jumble up the mesh so you can have like a cleaner start. Like, look at like regional dynamesh or something, but um, I, I love it. I, I don't do it enough. But, you know, all the time when I'm just goofing off, I'm like, ah, I forget about that. Uh, in fact, I think at the time I was like, you know, I never use snake hook. I always use grab. Grab doesn't affect it, you know, with dynamic topology or the dynamic tessellation doesn't affect it. You know, and if you look at these, you'll see that, you know, I got kind of a, a shape motif going. And um, this is something that I'm determined to break. Um, you know, at this point, I was like, yeah, you know, no shape is precious. Just sculpt the hell over it. If you think a shape is important, just bust that pitch up because, you know, getting attached to it will have you, uh, you know, maybe maybe chasing ghosts, you know. But, you know, you'll also see over the course of these that I begin to focus more and more on the, uh, you know, the form lines that actually connect each segment. So this one, I think, is the first one in which I start actually being more um, form oriented with the, um, the swooping of all the, uh, you know, different color plate, I mean, different shape plates. So it's always like a, a, a process of me claying it up, polishing it, and then coming back with the dam, maybe a little super pinch. It, the, like the super pinch is great. I mean, um, you know, I just make up all this terminology myself, um, just <laughs> sculpting and thinking and listening to music. But um, yeah, the super pinch, and, and of course the dam is based off the dam standard and ZBrush. But, you know, it just felt it was a brush that I needed back in, uh, you know, good old Blender. But, I mean, right here, another another just quick sculpt done, knocked out. And you'll see me, of course, make quite a few of these uh, over the course. You know, I also talk about how you should just use the pull tool to just cut the base and make it flat if, if that's what's required. Um, you know, the bull tool is something that's so important now in my life that I think it should just be added to trunk as default behaviors in Blender. Um, it would definitely put it steps above other applications, but you know, my life, bull tool's never off. It's always there. So when people were like, hey, what's that crazy bull in? I'm like, you haven't been following me long. Um, but I always assume that, you know, the people watching these videos are the same people that's been watching me since I made a duck. Who knows, maybe, maybe you're all new people that just, it just randomly came across my video and was like, hey, I like this guy. I'm going to start following like yesterday. So here's the second sculpt. The, or maybe this is the first sculpt. Uh, these videos might all be out of order. In fact, I think this was the first sculpt. Um, 
So when I was looking at this thing, I saw immediately the shapes building like an old man. And so I think I start off uh, drawing on top of it and I like doodle like an old man face on it. But um, also the grease pencil. I mean, you know, you should always have the grease pencil nearby. Um, you know, another piece of advice that probably is useless is, uh, you know, reading comics has like changed my perspective on everything art artistically. I mean, I'm not saying I'm, my goal is to create Batman, but the the drawings and the technology and uh, it's just amazing. Like, um, you know, I'm a big Batman fan and reading Superman and all these comics and, you know, Flashpoint uh, Convergence event just ended, but you know, the, uh, the technology that you see in it is just amazing. Like, uh, and also the shapes, like they, you, they, there's never an unflattering frame. Like you'll never see like Superman dog faced on a page, you know, where he, he's so close to the camera that the focal shift just makes him look like an, like an oaf. Well, you'd never see that, you know? And so I just kind of always keep these sort of things in my mind, but I'm not saying, you know, you should be like comics, but I'm just saying, you know, I personally now read quite a few comics, just, um, you know, because I just love the, the technology and also the characters, you know, and also watching these writers just mess up and destroy universes. Like, it's so crazy. Like, I was all excited for Convergence and it just was crazy. So, on this one, I tried to go for something a little different um, than usual. You know, I've been like pulling these chins out and pointing them up. Uh, you also see the area in the front was kind of a little bit hard to control, but, you know, whatever it gets dealt with like this area you know when stuff like this kind of happens like usually what i'll do is just uh you know inflate and then smooth um you know inflate is i pinch is p uh you know d if you make the uh the dam from a crease brush you can just press c twice and that'll bring up those brushes so i do use quite a few hotkeys um you know, probably in the future, Hard Ops will have, um, you know, some sort of pie menu for it or something just to be even more exclusive. But, you know, my goal is definitely to eventually change my style into one that basically requires that you have Hard Ops to even follow along because all the stuff that I've done like a thousand times in other videos, like, I am determined to not do it anymore. Like, I'm, I'm tired of setting up renders with the same settings every time. Like, every time I'm setting the clamp and turning on these passes and just the same stuff every time and so there has to be some buttons for this stuff because those are all wasted clicks just like when people are like hey what's the bull tool you know like that uh, th those keystrokes could have built a chair you know not to rant but you know they, they could have so you know definitely um as a blender user i, I find i find that you know too late I waited to, um, you know, begin to uncover the, uh, you know, the power of, um, you know, s scripting and what I can do for my workflow by utilizing just a little bit of it. Um, like, it's really amazing. Like, um, you know, and also the, the scripting community is just out there. I got to give a shout out to, uh, you know, uh, Stack Exchange, you know, Blender Artists Forums, like, um, you know. There, there are definitely resources that I think makes Blender a software that's unique. So, I mean, if you're not a part of those things, you definitely should be. And also, um, you know, post your questions there because, you know, usually I'll type a question into Google and one of the responses will be someone asked me, one of the uh, results will be someone asking it on Stack Exchange. And, like, I've just, um, you know, I, I, I probably sound like a... <laughs> like super late to the party you know it's like me talking about github or something or uh like yahoo like have you guys seen that yahoo it is amazing but you know um as a person that's uh barely you know getting his feet wet with scripting like i already see that it's going to be uh fantastic you know i'm a like i'm already getting hard ops pretty much to the point that i wanted it to with all the behaviors and psychologies and then i think after that it'll just be a matter of refinement 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 and you know, with the tools making my workflow that much easier, I can begin thinking forward on things even further down the ways that I can begin making easier. So at this point, you see that I kind of built up a shape, started claying it, and then just went back through with the clay and just added mass on top of it. I do remember that at this point, I was telling my mentee about more stuff about how, you know, no shape is precious. Like you just got to 
beat those shapes up like and get those interesting silhouettes like don't look at the don't look at what's inside of the mesh look at just the outline of the mesh and think about what what you think you'll feel if you saw that outside your window as a silhouette against your window or something like would you be like oh my god it's a killer robot or would you be like oh man it's an action figure coming to haunt me you know um so continuing on so just damming it up followed up with a little bit more damming and clay just for good measure i mean as far as blender goes the the, the brushes are are not rocket science i mean there's no need to even explain them you know because you just hit them and you immediately know what they do but the important thing is uh, i think the behavioral psychology behind it that's important to understand um you know i might sound like a crazy person but you know this is really my philosophy you know whenever it comes to blender is that you know the tools do a function but you know the way that they do that function is what i refer to as a psychology and that's the part that you really have to understand so that way you can operate it with your with your eyes closed I mean, I'm not saying I use Blender with my eyes closed. If I was blind, I would probably stop using Blender. Yeah, I'd do some 3D and Braille. I'd have a Braille Blender. But you definitely got to understand the psychology of the tools because, um, you know, I, I see people all the time, you know, they'll, they'll do tests. They'll render a sphere with every setting of, like, reflection. It's, you know, like those kind of tests. Like, I mean, but you got to approach the entire program like that. Like, um, you know, I was hanging out with Cynical Cat uh, a while back, and he, he was pointing out to me that, you know, the offset, I mean, the uh, inset also has an option for O being outset, which will push it out, which be, which in, turned out to be an immense help for me as far as uh, getting my script to be to the point that I wanted it to be. You know, this robot actually looks pretty cool. This one, I say, would be mentally inspired by Tony Leonard, <laughs> which is... Um, the guy I consider to be my personal mentor. Um, I think he's one of the recommended channels on my side if you're you know, not familiar with him, but you gotta check him out, his work's great. Um, but all throughout this thing, it's just, it's control. Like all you see in here is me controlling my strokes. Like I don't wanna stroke 30 times to get a result. I wanna stroke one time to get the line I want, to get the mass I want, and then use the other brushes for refinement but it's really a straightforward process. Um, and then of course I decimate at the end because I like my blend files to be small. So I just put decimate modifier, set the point two, apply it. If that doesn't work uh, lower enough, I'll put another decimate at point two. And look at this thing. I think even in this one, I did a little retopo just to you know, talk to him about choices. Um, when it comes to retopo, that's my approach to it is basically it's choices. You're choosing the easiest way to net this thing with the least stress added to the um, mesh by you know distorting quads so it, it's a matter of you know really picking your battles but you know I look at people's topology and all I see in my head are choices I'm like right here this person might have got confused or you know something like that and you know I, just, I start trying to you know rationalize it and put it together I'm like you know maybe it's maybe a dog was barking right here or his girlfriend was yelling at him you know, and try to, you know, solve the mystery. But maybe there is no mystery. Maybe it's just, you know, skill level. But a as you, you know, work with these meshes and, you know, subdivide it and see where pinches come from, you'll you'll eventually have a good idea on what causes um, these sort of issues to happen. Where you have like, a, you know, stars and poles and you know bad geometry connecting and distorted quads because it always you know turns into a nipple whenever subdivisions applied so you know my philosophy nowadays is to get nice topology and then just destroy it you know because instead of just taking a cube and cutting it into a helmet and then cutting that into pieces which would be crazy you could just you know sculpt it up retopo it get it a little clean and then really just go to town on it maybe just go to town a little bit you know maybe just have a few drinks but call it an early night and then from there just um you know bake to that which is you know the next level and um you know what i'm trying to go for is uh being able to bake all this stuff like really easily which you know i don't have a hard time now but you know 
as you see, I deal with mainly high poly models, so not a whole lot of uh, baking anyways, unless, you know, I got algorithmic for that, you know, they do job, brah. Algorithmic will take care of you. Which right now, they of course have a steam cell going on. You should definitely go pick up Substance Painter because it's 50% off and is probably the greatest painting solution you could possibly have, period. I mean, I used to texture paint in Blender day and night and be like, you know, I'll never stop texture painting in Blender, but seriously, there you just gotta go and try it because, or you know, just watch my videos on it, you know, it is easy. And the programs just get better and better, and as they add more features, it becomes more intuitive and less cluttery. The crashes are more infrequent with every release, which is what you hope for, by the way, but not always the case. It's just fantastic. So, still going through and just retopologizing this thing as if this matters. I think I go over a couple of pieces. You know, I think I'll actually speed it up for a minute just to, you know, get through this part because, you know, this isn't about the retopology process. Also, as I'm uh, going through this uh, video narration, I'm, you know, listening to the, you know, soundtrack to Mr. Robot, which is a, uh, you know, great soundtrack. Uh, that's a, also a great show, even though it was kind of crazy at the end there. But, um, you know, this thing's actually glitching. <laughs> I, I looked away for a minute and I come back and this thing's uh, just wigging out. So, it looks like we do have a little bit of time left in this portion of the video. However, I do know I got like three to go over. So, you know, if you watch this, you win uh, probably a platinum medal or silver. Now, if you, um, you know, put this stuff to use and your sculpts are beginning to improve, then you've earned your gold medal from watching this, uh, what I assume is going to be a very long tutorial. But we'll just watch myself kind of skit through time like the matrix and, um, you know, drop shapes in here. You know, nothing fantastic. Uh, also, you know, what about that Walking Dead, eh? Uh, no spoilers in the uh, in the comments, but yeah, it's crazy. Um, so continuing onward, just cutting stuff up. Now, right here, I actually uh, you know cut some stuff in. However, I have to make a choice as far as how I'm going to get the stuff to connect. Um, so I put a loop here, and also put one there. However, it also almost came to the hard choice of putting one that was going, um, you know, vertical, which would have, um, you know, added a little bit of unnecessary density to the mesh. So those are, that's part of those choices I was telling you about. Um, you know, also the, the, the choices you make, um, you know, really begin to affect you at this part when you're like, uh, you know, using your edge flow to your advantage for beveling and chamfering. So I'm just basically selecting things, going through, marking them sharp, using hard ops. Um, like I said, this part is irrelevant. You know, this part was quite strange. So for some reason I had this like bevel happening and I wasn't sure why it was happening for a minute. However, I believe it turned out because there was a second modifier on the shape. But you know, this part isn't even, isn't even relevant, you know. Um, but, you know, since it's in here, might as well review it together here. You know, like I said, this isn't a tutorial. This is more of a chat. I'm out the tutorial game. Now I'm, now I'm Blendertainment, all right? So, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, tutorials when relevant. So here's the next match that my mentee sent me. This one I was actually quite impressed with. Um, now, at the end, also, we had to talk about base meshes and building a decent base mesh for your sculpt to give yourself a decent start so this at least shows that my maybe my mentorship has been helpful um to this you know he had like a a, a big twinkie on his back so we'll go ahead and smooth that out and always you know pull these shapes like i see i see this guy using my influence second hand that I've influenced from the people that influenced me. So it's definitely something exciting to see. Um, you know, my, my hope is that I'm able to 
uh, you know, take the traits of things I like and mutate it into something that's unique to my style, which is, you know, what I hope that I'm doing with my robots. Like, uh, you know, I want them to look realistic, but, you know, also um, powered by technology a little bit more advanced than our own currently. But, and that's kind of, you know, what I have in mind. Also, you know, I make these robots thinking of things like strength. Like, I'm like, can this guy flip over a car? How many punches would it take to kill a man? You know, could he? how many humans could he kill before he's put down? Could he be put down? Is this guy capable of teleportation? Uh, who's his favorite character on Bleach? You know, that's where he, she, you know, yeah, it doesn't matter to me. Um, so in this one, you know, I start off with the super pinch. Just going through, and I just name it SP. All it is is just a pinch at one. This is your ultimate control brush. Like, just, just pull it in the direction you want things to flow. And you begin controlling flows. Um, you know, sometimes I use these tools and I, I surprise myself. Like, uh, you know, I just enlighten myself on another uh, kind of unexpected behavior. Um, you know, control system. Like, I kind of look at this like a, like control. Like, uh, you know, sculpting in 3D is like... Um, you know, being a waterbender, you know, sculpt in water. Um, so, or at least to me, you know, Blender always felt like uh, the mesh wasn't there, like I'm just kind of moving air. Um, but, you know, these tools, that, and, and, you know, the, the, I think uh, it was last year around this time that the uh, Blender received sculpt tool improvements as far as like speed and stuff like that done by, uh, I think it was Sergey. But it, it was excellent. Like after that, you know, Blender definitely became a uh, excellent choice. I mean, you know, and also you want to go under options. If you look over on the uh, T panel, there's a little options tab below tools. You go there, turn off threaded sculpt if you feel that it is uh, slow on your system. For some reason, I'm using an i7, but the sculpting uh, freaks out a little bit, like it's slow. So I just turned it off and it acts normal, which is, uh, you know, kind of strange. So now after polishing it up, you know, it's time to, you know, Jean-Claude Van Damme brush this thing. And that's exactly what I do. And it doesn't even matter if they're big. If, if the if the damn strokes are big, then I'm going to go through with the polish and turn that thing into a nice little bevel, which in turn becomes a, uh, you know, a surface separator. Um, I think in retrospect, on these videos, the main thing uh, I kind of regret is that I didn't go over masking. The The masking in Blender is real good. Like, um, I think since they updated the grease pencil, grease cut, and that stuff has been kind of strange, so I haven't been using it, but, you know, Sculpting has so many additional improvements and add-ons that uh, will assist your workflow with it as well. However, you know, Vanilla Blender does the job. In fact, you know, for the most part, I try to use a... Um, the most simplified version of Blender as possible, and that's that's for you, the viewer, you know, to you know keep it as something that you can attain just in your viewport. Now, another thing I also want to throw in is quick preferences. Um, if you don't have quick preferences, go get it. Google Blender add-on quick preferences, and basically it'll add something to your end panel where you can make it where instead of the uh, you know that 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 bright white gray. Uh, default shade that's on everything that you look at like as far as objects before you start putting materials uh, you'll have something that's you know what you see here is basically dark gray so this I believe also helps me with my sculpt and it gives me a more uh, you know grounded look whenever I look at it instead of that nasty 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 white like I seriously cannot stand that <laughs> like uh Someone sent me a, the final mesh is, uh, it starts out like that. You'll, you'll see the difference. Like I cycled through it for a good minute. So this one was also just me just, you know, just goofing around, touching it up. Like, uh, you know, I'm just sending them back just, uh, these random ideas to just, um, you know, show them how I would have basically approached it because, you know, as far as retopology, um, you know, that part is, is it anything to worry about? But if you're retopping shapes that just aren't nice looking, then you know you're wasting your time. And that's that's kind of you know when I started changing my opinion on topology. You know, I, I see people and they'll they'll post a, a picture of a eye socket and they're like, "I'm starting a human. How's my top? Seriously, how's your topology? How's your model? Where the hell's the rest of it? You know? So you know, shoot first, topo later. You know." 
is, is my approach. However, you know, sometimes I'll just go ahead and just straight away model or, you know, sculpt and model at the same time while keeping the topology, which is also fine. It's a, you know, completely different way to handle things. Yeah, here, here we see, you know, I'm, wor I'm trying to work in these form lines to be, um, you know, smooth and connected with each other over to pieces. Um, this was, I believe, at the time that we were discussing this when I was talking about how you know, um, when it comes to robots, I'm always thinking of, in the back of my mind at least, there's there's two models I'm thinking of, and that's Iron Man and Gray Fox from Metal Gear, and maybe Sarah Lanthropus. You know, there's, there's a whole bunch I can just keep naming off, but and anime people, you know, I'm crazy like that. You know, but um, these are the th these are things that I'm always thinking of, like uh, because they they were masterpieces. Like I remember at the time when I first saw them, like in there. Um, when I first saw Gray Fox, you know, Metal Gear Solid, I was tripping out. You know, I was tripping out when credits started rolling when I went up the elevator. I was like, whoa, this isn't, this is a different game. How much was this game? This must have been expensive, you know, like, it, 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 was, it was just such an amazing experience, you know, on the, on the very first one. So, I go through and, um, you know, I just add a little bit of plating. Um, you know, one of the things I'm going to stop doing altogether for robots is Metal Max. Um, I sincerely apologize for all metal necks that I've done in the past. Also, um, don't follow the technique in how to sculpt a robot in Blender. If anything, you should be looking at the techniques that are used in Dukes, since he's my favorite. However, um, you definitely want to think about materials and flexibility. And you know, now, now I'm trying to go for the rubber neck look um, on everything. And you know, may, maybe some metal plating, but you know, you got you got to think of that kind of stuff because I, I see all these people and you know, it's it's my fault maybe you know because I was I was part of it too. You know, it'd be like a metal trapezius. It's like yeah, I was gonna bend that thing. Um, so, you know, I'm also thinking of that kind of at the same time. Like you'll see me um, occasionally sculpt like rivets and um, you know, like little latches in there, um, just because you know those small micro details just kind of add more. You know appearance to it as a whole and you know this robot in general is uh, pretty simple you know I could do with a, a good latching pass of just going through and uh, working on it so you know just like I was talking about how you shouldn't be uh, giving things metal necks I will give this one a metal plated neck you know this robot doesn't turn his head but you know when it comes time to turn his head you might be in for a, a nasty surprise but you know I'm just really just cutting shapes in here and just talking at the same time um, about just random stuff. But, you know, like I said, on my Patreon or, you know, just writing personally, you know, I do mentorships. Um, and it's guaranteed improvement. I'll tell you what you need to hear, which is you did horrible, do it again. But here's why. You know, because, you know, I also charge a separate fee if you want to just you know have me tell you that's awesome all the time like I'll, I'll i'll tell you that all the time you know real cheap like in fact you can buy my likes as well i'll like all your stuff you know five dollars a month you know half of my netflix so at least i did go through and add some stuff in and of course nothing is precious so even though the shape was you know final finalized looking um because it was polished and such you know, I'm still going to go through and just really, you know, have my way with it. You know, I could just dig in here, cut this up, like completely redesign it. And, you know, no love lost because these are just ideas. And, you know, with the dynamic topo, you can quickly just uh, go in snake hook, raise your, raise your, you know, detail percent. And, you know, go in the snake hook with, um, you know, subdivide collapse and just grab pieces and just decimate it completely reevaluate your idea and try it all over again so this one I believe goes on for a minute however you know I think I've done pretty good you know I was um, watching YouTube videos thinking all right I gotta narrate this uh, sculpt mega mix but I gotta figure out uh, what I gotta talk about the whole time so I was like you know what what will happen if I run out of stuff to talk about but luckily I'm a, a blabber mouth and have much to talk about but, you know, the main theme I'm, I'm thinking in my head is, in this episode, I am explaining um, 
sculpting. In fact, I thought Photoshop actually popped up. So, you know, there's the base mesh that, um, you know, we went over. And this is his result. So this is the, um, you know, the third sculpt here of this uh, Mega Mix. So I'm very proud of uh, my mentee for his progress on this and, you know, restoring my faith. However, you know, he'll definitely be showing some improvements on the next one. In fact, um, the last whip he sent me was even better. So this one was done by someone on Facebook who uh, I'll just refer to as RJ or JR. Who uh, So here you see the difference between, um, you know, quick and here we'll uh, go back real quick. So here you can see a difference between the blender's default and deep gray or dark gray. So this one, you know, was uh, posted saying he had uh, watched my videos. So I had wrote him and was like, you know, I'm actually doing like a sculpt mega mix right now. So how about you send me that sculpt and I'll add it to the um, pile of sculpts that I've been, uh, you know, just touching up lately because it's just as much of a learning process for me as it is for others. So whenever I first received a file, I was quite surprised. Like I was like, "Oh man, so this is what this looks like in the file." <laughs> I was like, yeah, I thought I thought it was like a robotic kitty. I thought that was what he was actually going for. So you know, that's my kitty with the grease pencil. You know, grease pencils fun times. But you know, I felt that maybe he was going for something a little cooler. So of course, these sculpt mega mixes. You know, I might as well just say they're making my base meshes because you know you see me going through it here basically decimating the form using the behavior of subdivide collapse to begin you know just decimating and reforming everything and also you know I, when i received a fall i was like oh christ this guy made only the head instead of like a little bit of shoulder to go down you know like at least give me a trapezius to work with um so that way you can get a good whip screenshot um i i definitely plan on doing a, another video for blending away to pain where i'm going to be going over presenting whips and how you should approach your own work as a beginner because i receive a lot of pictures all the time of just grayscale renders in the viewport or they'll render with cycles but they won't have a single light or material it's like not not a single material not a single light just cycles 10 10 samples but like hey what do you think is model? well i think you don't give a damn about it so i don't care either um it, it, and you know that's not it you know you care very much so basically i think this guy was using like an older version of blender so the polish brush wasn't present. So what I did was just open any blend file and just linked in the polish brush. You know, that's all there was to it. So, you know, this one, I think I touched it up just while watching The Walking Dead just earlier uh, last night. So, you know, nothing, nothing, nothing fancy pants here. Just, um, you know, I just wanted to try to play with it a little bit differently than usual. So here... You see me being really messy, like laying in just, you know, big forms, common shapes. You know, I got this, like I see it looking at myself doing these, you know, especially four in a row. Like, I'm like, I got these shape motifs I need to break. And so I'll be working on that, and, you know. Um, but I just go through polishing. You know, the edges don't really matter, you know, for the edges, there's the SP. The SP will do it, you know. And the polish is its enforcer, you know. It's like the SP walks around trying to lay down the law. But if you don't listen, you'll get polished. You will get polished, all right? So you keep that in mind, you know. Like the super pinch lays down the law, and then the polish is the enforcer. Um, of the law. And then the clay, the clay is like the um, like the home builder. It's the one that you know builds the areas, you know, generates the interest. It's, it's the the buzz maker, you know. So that, that's just like my my idea, you know. You got you got when when you're sculpting, you, you definitely got to keep it gangsta, all right. Um, you know, as a three D artist, that's one thing I definitely know about know a lot about is keeping it gangsta, you know, in Blender. I'm a keyboard gangst <laughs> no, I'm kidding I don't even know where to go with this um, so I mean what else is there to say 
I'm going through and I'm pinching it. Like, I'm pinching these meshes so bad I'm giving them Indian burns. But really, that's it. Like, um, you know, the, to the person that actually made this uh, particular mesh, you know, my advice would be um, it's got to look good from the front. It's got to look good from the side. It's got to look good from three quarters. It's got to look good from the back. I mean, maybe not from the back if you're really just trying to cut corners, but um, I was, uh, it was kind of deceptive receiving this mesh. Like, uh, yeah, I thought it was uh, going to be a little bit more um, on its way. But um, once again, you know, thank you, of course, for allowing me to use your mesh in this video and narrate over it. Um, you know, I want to be like Red Supre and then call myself Bren Supre and just narrate over other people's tutorials, just making fun of them pressing the wrong buttons and stuff like that. However, I'm pretty sure that would get me flagged by the Blender community. I'd be like an enemy, never able to speak at the conference or, you know, any of that stuff. But, you know, here you see me going with the dam and the dam is set to brush density because I'm, you know, the circle is determining the depth. Like I cannot tell you how amazing it is to have the sort of, uh, you know, brush psychology basically because you know when you're and I, I just use it just for concept and like uh you know i've yet to try to take a, a mesh and just finish it in dynamic topology because you know it's crazy like it's like the edge flow is kind of nasty you think i you think i'm gonna use this nasty edge flow to try to convey my idea without a little bit of refinement like i mean i might be bullying up these meshes but i'm not that crazy you know but maybe you are but you know, that's another thing too, you know, it trips me out whenever people just post dynamic topology sculpt because, you know, they're usually pretty, pretty facet, pretty busted, you know, there's no texture or materials, you know, and if you do try to put texture or materials, it's going to look pretty, pretty bad, but, you know, that's just me. So, you know, maybe that piece didn't need to be there in retrospect. Next time, that shape will not be there. But, you know, here I am, going through, laying down the law. Everybody's obeying. Pretty much everybody is obeying. Like, I'm going to start calling Super Pinch the, the Super Conformist. Uh, because it, it just makes the mesh just obey. Like, the mesh just lays down its arms. And that's it. But this is all there is to it you know at least for me like um you know as 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 far as these shapes go you know there's no tutorial that'll that'll make you a master um it's, it's all just practicing and and being lost in your own thoughts with these brushes you know the the hardest part for me with uh, getting started sculpting is usually finding my wacom pen it's like buried under a bunch of crap on my desk every time so i have to like stand up and look forward to make sure it's not on my lap because if so it'll just fall off like it always does but really, that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, here you see me, um, you know, just creating a new area just to um, just demonstrate that even though that part was pretty much, you know, set, you can just change an idea just like that and go in a completely different direction. Um, so, you know, if you're one of these commenters that's like I can't I've been waiting to get into sculpting what the hell are you waiting for you know I, I gotta wait until I'm a good poly modeler to start sculpting well guess what you'll never be a good poly modeler until you you know start covering some of your other bases you, you know, you're just gonna bring yourself out um, so you know just get around the program like it's important to you know know your way around the software you should be able to go in and do simulations. I mean, at least basic simulations, because it's not that hard. I mean, you know, an object menu, you can go under objects. Uh, I think the object menu and, uh, you know, go under quick effects and set up quick smoke and quick fire. You just want, if you want to just set up something in like two seconds. However, it's important to definitely know your way around it. And sculpting's part of it and scripting's part of it, you know. Um, like the last time I was using Blender for scripting, I was dealing with the BGE which was also a, a kind of a nightmare like i'm not a programmer by by any means like i don't have that <laughs> that frame of mind um you know i had someone helping me with the code and i actually my critique was you made it too complicated adding these uh variables and dictionaries uh like i don't, I don't think like that <laughs> we need it simple again 
but you know because of um because of that though hard ops is much much better so you know this part i think i'm pretty much near the end and i am so i did go back and um i think in this fall i accidentally forgot to duplicate it however i did capture the original mesh just put them next to each other but you know the moral of the story is get in practice sculpting just do it just do it just get it done and that's all there is to it you know don't start tomorrow start today <laughs> or you know whatever but you know that's it so i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you guys next time